looking into the earth and heaven that we have for this morning. We will read the scripture. I may not have too much time to say, let us contribute, but I'm going to just share generally. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's open our Bible to Exodus chapter number 2. We're going to read from chapter 2, and we're going to also read from chapter 3. Exodus chapter 2. Keep your finger on verse number 13. The theme for this morning is divine involvement compared. Divine involvement compared. And I read from verse 13. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? In, in, intended thou to kill me, and as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this is known. Now, when Pharaoh heard these things, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Exodus chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 to 8. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by the raising of their tax master. For I know their sorrow, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land, and a large, and a large, and unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, once again, sanctify your word. In Jesus' name. The scripture here explains a time when Moses already knew that God had called him. But unfortunately for him, he went in the power of the flesh. And he moved ahead of time, I will say. And he had compassion. Reading through the open heaven of this morning, our Father in the Lord revealed to us that Moses actually went out. He saw the people. He saw initially an Egyptian and an Hebrew man. And of course, you expected it, and we know the story. He killed the Egyptian and buried him, thinking nobody has seen him. But this time around, he now saw two Hebrews fighting one another, and he now became an arbiter. They don't fight one another, and one of them spoke, and he said, who made you a judge over us? One would have expected them to say, oh, the hero has come. The man who is supposed to deliver us has come. Instead, he had the contrary. And the moment he had that, he knew that, oh, this is revealed already. What he decided to do was to take off. Brethren, what our Father has given to us as an insight this morning is to compare when you go by yourself or you allow God to go for you. Moses decided to go out of just compassion and the fact that he has an inclination that God has sent him. Brethren, every time you go by yourself, you need to protect yourself. Nobody is going to defend you. And as a result of what Moses did, he became a fugitive and he had to run into the desert. And not only that, he was, he was now afraid for his life. Now, the second scripture we read talked about how God came down into the matter and said to Moses, now it is time for me to move. And when God moved, it was obvious that no forces of darkness, no journeys and jambresses of Egypt could stand before him. Now, said we should compare it. 
in the case of when God came down, there was no labor. And I want you to take note of that. And when God was not there, the man has to craft different ideas in order to achieve the result. The bottom line of what we want to talk about this morning is this. If you are a child of God, connection and networking alone cannot work for you. And I repeat, if you are a child of God, connection and networking alone cannot work for you. And you ask me why? Because you have another contender that is working against you at any particular point in time. If my neighbor did all the connections and he was able to scale through, you take the same step. Because you are a child of God, it is you they will cut. Because you are not fighting against flesh and blood. You are contending against principalities and power. That is why you need the divine connection. Even Jesus Christ could not. Say, Pastor, how do we know? The Bible tells us very clearly. God, I mean, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Who went about doing good? He was only able to do those good. Why? Because God was with him. If God had not been with him, there was no way he could achieve that much. Joshua couldn't achieve much without God. No wonder when he saw the captain of the host of the Lord, the man was very aggressive and he thought his strength was more than sufficient. He wanted to even fight. And the scripture said, the man said, hold on, do you know who you are confronting? I am come here as the leader of the captain of the host of the Lord. Even just not to assist you, but to fight the battle. Brethren, everywhere you had to turn in this, under this heaven, and you do not allow the supernatural to guide you, and you are a child of God, I am not prophesying doom to you. You are going to fail. Unless if you want to struggle and maintain your miracle or your, your success by yourself, and everyone that has ever attempted to maintain or sustain it by themselves, they have always had to cut corners. And when you eventually cut corners, you will end up at the other side, but not on the side of God. If you want to end up on the side of God, you better cry unto heaven that, God, I need your help. Vain is the help of a man without God. You need God. You need a divine dimension. I repeat it again. When Moses failed to call on God for the first attempt, when he started using his own strength, he had to find every means of sustaining it. And he will get to a point where he will break down. Why? Because you want to identify with God and at the same time walk in the flesh. It will not work. No wonder the scripture is very clear. A man cannot walk in the flesh and yet satisfy God. It does not work. In fact, as a result of the fact that you are a child of God, Jesus Christ has declared it. Without me, you can do what? What is nothing? Nothing is nothing, my friend. Even if it appears as if the money is coming into your account and you seem to be achieving the result, physically speaking, heaven is telling you, you have achieved nothing. So sometimes it is not just the result that you get, that you get the money coming in or you get connection working for you. No, it is what the verdict of heaven says that matters. Even in the midst of all the money that is coming in or all things working out together for you, that's why it is so dangerous to, to, to depend only on miracles. The miracles can come and manifest. At least water came out from the rock. And yet heaven says you have done nothing. It is my prayer that God will go with you. Amen. It is my prayer that you will go with God. Amen. It is my prayer that you will walk side by side with God. Amen. You see, when you compare the issue of the divine intervention with divine involvement in the issues of your life, brethren, it becomes easier for you to know how to walk with God. Let's take a quick comparison from the scriptures that we read and some other scriptures. You see, brethren, you need to recognize from the beginning of your life that it is not by power, it is not by might, it is by the Spirit of God. For I'm talking to a child of God. 
Because for every non-child of God, you can devise so many means. And you think you are working. But as far as a child of God is concerned, the race is never to the swift. And the battle is never to the strong. God brings the times and chance and makes sure it works for you. And when Moses thought that it is time for me to move, God said it is not yet time. But the moment God came in, even Pharaoh bowed down to him. Do you realize suddenly that it was just the rod of a shepherd that became a, an instrument in the hand of Moses called now the rod of God? I hope you know when the, when the, change, uh, the change of name came in. It was no longer the rod of Moses. It became the rod of God. So the journeys and jambreses of Egypt hands down. And it comes to a point when Moses ever appeared on the scene. They said to him, here come the terror. Nobody wants to stand before him. He held the whole of Egypt hands down with what? A rod. Brethren, there is a rod in your hand. Wait for heaven to empower it. And as heaven empowers it in your life, you will not fail in Jesus' name. I said you will not fail in Jesus' name. You will not fail in Jesus' name. Jacob had struggled so many years in his life. A supplanter. He did everything he could in order to be on top. But when he got to that place and he rested his head, heaven now told him, look, you have, strength, you have run for too long. Let me help you now. And immediately he allowed heaven to help. You know how he did it? He cried to God. He said to God himself, say, you are taking me from this place. If you will go before me, and if you accompany me in this journey, and I come back here, I will give praise to you. You know what he testified eventually? He said, with an ordinary road, I cross this river. And I am coming back with a band. How many of you want that kind of testimony? You better let God lead you. It takes divine involvement to make a man a band from ordinary road with him, without no wife, no child, nobody. By the time he came back, he was testifying. That is the difference between a man that struggled and all the days of the life of Esau. He struggled all through. All his labor was not terminated at all. But if a man involved, involved God, every labor will be terminated with favor. It is my prayer that this morning you will cry to God. It doesn't matter what you are confronting now. All you need is God. When the king of Assyria came against the people of Israel, Ezekiel told them in that second Chronicles chapter 32, he said to them, don't worry yourself. He said, with him, we have chariots of horses and horses. He said, but they are flesh. He said, but with us, we have more with us than with them. And when God arose, he only sent how? Just one angel. And by the time you struggle all over the place, yet what an angel could do for you, it may take you several years. It is my prayer for you that you allow divine involvement in your life. Amen. You will allow divine involvement in your life. Amen. How many of you remember this story when Joshua was fighting the five kings? The Bible says he had fought the battle so well that there was so much land to cover. And then heaven responded. Say, I sent you. Don't worry. I am going to be here. And what did he do? The Bible says heaven opened up and hailstones were coming down were coming down. And the hailstone killed many more people than the sword of Joshua. There is a battle you are fighting in life. That is, you cannot win that battle except God helps you. And there is a victory God gives a man beyond your sword. Hello? Oh, let me not use the word sword. Beyond your skills, beyond your ability, beyond all the capacity you have, there is a victory that only God can give you. You will run all over the place without God. You say, but God, I am trying. He said, no, that's not what you need. You need me. And when I get involved, before you get there, I will open the heavens. And beyond all that your skills and ability can perform, I will deliver the victory to you. Brethren, God is about to deliver a victory that is beyond you into your hand. Amen. It is your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, it is your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Because when we pray this morning together, I want you to look beyond your capacity. Brethren, who am I to be in charge of Canada? 
Who am I? Like one of our people will always say, you know, some of us, we were not taught English with a Queen English. We were taught English with your vernacular. So when you are now speaking before the white guys, you say, are you really speaking English? And yet you are. And you look at yourself and say, what did I do to qualify for this? Is it not God? Brethren, when God delivers into your hand that which you cannot achieve, it will humble you. And that's why you need divine involvement. And it is my prayer for somebody here today. Whatever the challenges of life is, heaven will open up for you. Yeah. May you allow him into your situation. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let me mention this. Mordecai was an ordinary gatekeeper. Ordinary gatekeeper. And the authority has harassed him. Say, so we are going to get rid of you. And the man used all the connection and suddenly called unto Esther. Esther said, look, I can't go to the presence of the king. If I go there, something terrible could happen. And after some discussion, the man said, listen to me. You may stay in the palace and you think you are going to be delivered. But there is one thing I know. There will be an enlargement and a help that will arise for the people of Israel. An ordinary gate man speaking to the authorities. What can ever happen? But the scripture said to me, by the time you are getting to chapter 5, verse number 1, and in that night, the, the king could not sleep. There is a night that is coming that those who are oppressing your life will not be able to sleep. Yeah. There is a night that is coming that those who are harassing you will not be able to sleep. Yeah. You see, there are some things you cannot do yourself. And the scripture says, they were, you know, they were not using iPad in those days. They were using ordinary Bible, and I mean, ordinary books, scrolls, let's put it that way. And thousands of scrolls, the man said, can you bring something for me to read? In the midst of the scrolls, they were just searching and searching and got one. They will get your scroll very soon. Yeah. The scripture says when they read it, and they didn't just read, they got to a point, and the man said, stop there. What has been done to that man? He said, nothing. And he asked a question. He said, who is in the inner court? And God, who knows what he wants to do? The Bible says the king could not sleep. At what time in the night will you say you are not able to sleep? Tell me. Nine o'clock in the night? Twelve o'clock in the night? No, not quite. One o'clock, maybe. Two o'clock, maybe. And when they finish reading the scroll, how many hours? Maybe one hour. And that will have been about 3 o'clock in the night or 4 o'clock in the morning. And they saw somebody at the inner court. Huh? What has he come to do at that hour of the night? When God is involved in your case, brethren, let every man under heaven be attacking you left, right, and center. Our father in the Lord said here this morning, he said, just go home and sleep with your two eyes closed. Because when God is involved in your mind, please don't ever confront a man who God is behind him. Never. Don't ever try. It doesn't matter what you have. God will bring that man down. Because there is a God that controls the heavens and the earth. And who does as he places upon the surface of the earth and in the heavens also. That's why we are going to pray some prayer this morning. And I pray that you will sweat. You know, we learn to sweat under, under cold region. Don't look at me too much. Old. This is what cold has done to me. But I have also visited cold in another dimension too. And it is paying me off. Rise up on your feet. I don't want us to talk too much. Let's rise up on our feet. Why don't you say, Father, I bless your name. That I have heard your word this morning. You want to be involved in my case. Lord, come and be involved in my case. Just speak that to heaven for just briefly. Before we start the prayer point. Mate boko sika pali yanda ba. Rebosa ke poli gane sata li yanda ba. Kuribe redege shende li yaba. Mando skopre lepe ke te suto bulia. Yelite mana zonto liya pa koria la bono sende liya ba. Mateske prele de boshika lianda. Lord help me, Lord. 
Help me, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh -uh, say it better. Amen. Amen. You are going to say, Father, 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 Father. get involved in my life. Take over the affairs of my life. Come on, pray that simple prayer for us. Take over the affairs of my life. Take over the affairs of my life. Take over the affairs of my life. Mando scopa lige reboto shandalaba. Matose ke belige ne sotalia. Take over the affairs of my life. Take over the affairs of my life. Take over the affairs of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, I am not too, too encouraged. Your amen is too weak. He's standing on one leg. In Jesus' name we pray. Terminate all my struggle. Repeat that. Terminate all my struggle with your intervention. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, pray. I don't want to struggle anymore. I want God to take over. Enough of my struggle. Terminate every struggling in my life. I don't want to go by myself anymore. The arm of flesh will fail a man. The ability of a man is limited. I don't want to go by myself anymore. Be involved in my situation. Be involved in my life. Take control, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Just about three minutes more, brethren. We need to pray very well. You are going to cry, Father. You say, Father. Uh, Father. Give me victories, O Lord. Beyond my swords. Victories beyond my skills. Victory beyond my ability. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. There are victories beyond your abilities. There are victories beyond your sword. There are victories beyond your skills. There are victories beyond all that you can think of. Mele poto superba la gote sengeliaba. Maloti mana soto boliga na setelia. Father, victories that are beyond me. Victories that I cannot imagine. Testimonies beyond my ability. Father, take over. Father, take over. Enka poto soto bolia. Lende baga soto bolia ntaba na koto shitalia. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh -uh. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen to this. Mordecai said, help will arise from another place. You may not know where it will come from. As far as Moses was concerned, this is a wilderness. Rock, that can, rock don't produce water. But suddenly help came from another place. You are going to cry unto God. Let help arise to me. From another place, places unimaginable. Let there be divine involvement. Let heaven arise for me. Send help to my situation. Help us that I do not imagine, Lord. Send them into my life. Divine involvement beyond me. Mato seke bolia. Mato skepe igene sotolia. Mende bono supolia, landa kabados ketelia, takotis keteliondo. My father, my father, send help to me, O God. Send help to me, O God. Send help to me, O God. Help from another place. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Finally, those who know me. 
they know that I operate and enjoy the ministry of angels. And I know some people have testified. And suddenly they just look and say, this you and your angel. Because they saw what happened. Because I told them some few minutes before that angel will soon appear. And suddenly the man said, ah, let me tell you one case. We were at the redemption camp one day. And I was going to the auditorium. And I was just standing by the road. I said, God, where is the angel that will pick me to the auditorium? Please send him. And no sooner I said it, a very could just appear in the front of me. And I didn't even see that they were calling me. Say, come, 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 come. I have not finished playing, not quite two or three minutes. In fact, less than that. And there was no space in the car. I said, how do you want to carry me here? You know what they did? The man in the front said, Pastor, don't worry. I will go down for you. Uh -uh. I think going down was not sufficient. I said, but come, let us manage. He's in the camp. No police will arrest us. He said, no. He said, please, can you open the boot for me? And the man was surprised himself. He said, how can you go down from the front of a car? Because somebody prayed. That's just one instance. I won't deceive you. I called angels to come and carry those for me. In the presence of one of them. He said, you can't even carry this. I said, I need an angel to carry it. Right there in their prayer, somebody just approached me and said, can we help you with this? The man said, this is you and your angel. There are some help delivered by angel. And no man under heaven can dare face angels and say, I'm going to contend against you. In my life, please don't try me. Oh, not because it is me. Because I will call for the angels. How many of you would like ministry of angels? You know, you are still reluctant. You say, Yes. Say, send your angels into my life, O oh Lord. <laughs> Let them deliver divine assignments into my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray, brethren, and heaven will surprise you. Pray, brethren. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Why don't you receive from God? As you go this morning, the hand of the Lord will rest upon you. Divine involvement will be your portion. Heavens will fight for you. Occasions will work for you. Help will arise from another place. The Lord will send angels in your way. They will deliver their assignment. Victories beyond your sword becomes your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Come on, put your hands together for this God. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Somebody once asked, Pastor Femi Olawale in Canada, you are you of the same family? I said, no. I said, why do you resemble each other? In prayer and status and everything. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Amen and amen. Want to do something now. You know, in the prayer department, we know how to pray. But from time to time, I would like to wonder, and I do rather, that prayer does not give you money. You can pray for years. Oh, Lord, bless me. I even ask them that if I lock you inside for four, five months, say, today you are coming out of poverty. I told them we'll just be buried one by one without being blessed. Check the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Financial breakthrough does not attach to fasting and prayer. It's by giving. So today, God is expecting you to give yourself out of poverty. Um, I tried it. I've tried it. You want to build a house? And we gathered one million naira, myself and my family. And then 
we were happy because we never, never experienced us a huge amount before. It was in January that year we would start. And in December after, what you call, let's go and visit. I was praising God. I did them some kind of it. had not been roofed that time. Oh God, you are wonderful. Oh God, right there before our eyes, we are having the greatest auditorium. And God spoke to me. He came down. I, was, I thought they would ask me, what do you want like Solomon? But he didn't say that. He said, how much of your money is here? I began to dance. He said, you've not answered my question. I left that auditorium that disappointed. So I go back home. I was completely, I said, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, that did you didn't raise any fund. I mean, any offering for the auditorium that time. Oh, God, I'm very sorry. This and that. I was thinking before 31st of that year, I will raise 100 or 150,000 and go pack my bag. That one million that you have gathered, give it to me. I nearly said, get it behind me, sit down. <laughs> and I've already told my wife, she was very strong in those days. I said, I think within one or two months, we are going to deposit it in buying shares. We planned for that. So I phoned my wife. She was in school of nursing there. And my wife said, which money? Thank God she called back. If it is God, let it go. And if you see what God has built for us because of that money, and I'm telling you, the only way out of poverty, out of need, is by giving. It is time for offering. Choir, please. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to God in their ways. Yesterday we were told to give what you call celebration offering. We increased what we wanted to give about four times. And before I left here, God gave me back almost about 20 times of what we give. So please, give Tell your heart. Okay. Choir, please. And we are giving, dancing and singing, praising the Lord. So we all stand, please. You are the mighty God, the great I am.
Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. To you be all glory. Anytime we are led to give offering, you are about to cancel all kinds of suffering. I pray, Lord, that this offering we put our hand to our suffering. And your name will be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Praise the Lord. Um, let me start by apologizing for lapses during the organization. My name is Emekando. So for those who we didn't answer your mails or your texts on time, or didn't, um, you, especially, I want to apologize especially for the people who traveled on Thursday. Um, you're blessed in Jesus' name. Um, from, because um, we had major challenges, but the Lord intervened. Amen. Um, so please, we look at it more as a testimony because uh, we got divine intervention in Abuja. We were not expecting that intervention, and that was why part of why we had those delays and challenges. So please, we apologize. We're sorry. Some of it arose from late registrations. Uh, we've had 300 rooms in this hotel since June last year. At some point, we had to give up rooms because we, we had 197 people registered. So we said, okay, let's add a little more. By the time we finish, now we have over, this was about, by the time we closed on March 28, we had 197 people committed and paid. Uh, by the grace of God, we're over 400. And so we had to start scrambling for additional rooms. So if there are any failings in terms of, well, some visas came out the Wednesday before people traveled on Thursday. And we had to get the approvals to leave from the Pilgrims Commission on Thursday. That approval when we got it, it was scanned. We had somebody sitting in Abuja to get it. When it was scanned, the people said they wanted the original. So that, those were the things that you were seeing at the airport. So please do bear with us because the visas only came out Wednesday, 2 p.m. So there were things that we could not do. So transit visas were delayed, ETC. Uh, but, I mean, uh, we're blessed as Nigerians. Amen? Uh -huh. It is not in our nature to plan five years ahead like uh, the people in uh, Canada and the U.S., uh, so it, it introduces its own unique challenges. But the Lord is able. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are we forgiven? Yes. Ah, thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs> thank you very much. So we can continue. Uh, please, I'd like to meet with uh, bus captains after this announcement, uh, after the service. And... Um, Medical volunteers. Uh, we have medical insurance for serious emergencies, but we need a, we're trying to consider a medical team. So if there's a response, so I'd like to meet with there's some people who we'd contacted earlier and they had volunteered to help us. So please uh, meet um, Pastor Rofe at the back. So he would uh, is coordinate and I'll join you. Praise the Lord. Um, refunds for Jordan, ETC, hopefully, will be ready in the evening. Amen. For some of the other refunds, we're having a few challenges reconciling with UPA. So some, hopefully, will we'll advise you on what we're doing on those. And that. The ones that are reconciled, we'll pay you in the evening by the grace of God. Praise the Lord. Breakfast is at 7.05. And departure is at 8. Okay, no, breakfast is at 7.08. Because there are a few other things. Please remember to drink enough water in the buses, buy water, hydrate properly because you can get very easily dehydrated. Dove Media is live. Amen? Dove, Dove TV, fellowship this morning was watched by anybody who tuned into Dove, Dove TV worldwide. Praise the Lord. Let's, give, let's clap for the Dove team. 
live streaming by the grace of God will commence when? Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then those who paid for t-shirts, for shirts such as this, please collect your shirts outside. Hallelujah. We had wanted to restrict the shirts to only those who paid. But um, the grace of God abounds. So if you want shirts, they cost only $30. Please see them at the... Um, we're not in Freetown. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're in Jerusalem, the land of the Jews, where money is the currency. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it's only $30. Praise the Lord. Uh, audio CDs are available from the Word and Sound Desk, so please book. They, they are $60. Then Dove Media have a full set of DVDs for $100. Um, business forum, those who haven't registered and who would like to attend, uh, will have a business forum with some Israeli companies tomorrow uh, between 10 and 2. So if you'd like to register, please see them at the desk and pay. Um, we had wanted to we'll still take registration at the old rate, despite um, moves to increase the price. Praise the Lord. Then, um, for those going to the Dead Sea, please remember to take along with you your swimsuits and a towel if you want to go into the Dead Sea. With the Dead Sea, you're able to float. So it's a unique experience, but it also needs water is very salty, so you need to wash off quickly once, you're, once you've done that. Praise the Lord. I uh, would like uh, the following people to please come forward. Pastor Adebisi Abayomi. Please come forward. It was your birthday on 9th May. Pastor Oluwaje Esther, please come forward. It was your birthday on 10th May. <laughs> Mrs. Daniel Teresa, please come forward. It's your birthday today. Um, Pastor Deshola, please uh, could you uh, pray for them and then close the fellowship. Thank you very much. God bless you. Shall we pray together? Eternal Father, we are grateful to you. Thank you for these people who are doing their birthday today. Lord, we want to rejoice. Or people are doing their birthday this month. We want to rejoice with these ones. We ask, oh God, that your grace, your glory, we tabernacle with them in Jesus' name. Amen. On this occasion of their birthday, that gift that only God can give, may the Lord give to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone say amen with you. God will give them double blessing to you. We pray that in your homes, in, your, in, 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 in those things you do for living, we ask that the God of heaven will make those things progressive in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatsoever it is that you don't want, that I want around you, that the Lord Almighty will take it off in the name of Jesus. Amen. On this occasion of your birthday, the Lord will smile on you. Amen. He will visit you. Amen. Those traumatic experiences that you have had in the past, those will be the last in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you journey in this race to the kingdom of heaven, you will not be stagnated. Amen. The Lord will be with you. Amen. The Lord will bless you. Amen. will bless your home. He will bless your businesses. Every day for the rest of your life, you have reason to testify. Amen. Father God, every one of us who are gathered this morning, we ask that we will have reason to testify. Amen. King of glory, those who are holding our blessing, anywhere they are, Lord Almighty, just as the king could not sleep in the days of Mordecai, because he has to be blessed. Those who are having a blessing in their hands, they will not rest, they will not sleep until they deliver in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we go this morning, Lord Almighty, we pray that you will go with us. Amen. Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with blessing. We pray that your blessing, oh God, your blessing, Lord, will not cease in our life. Amen. And Father, we pray that today, King of Glory will speak to the womb of this day. That everything that will happen today will bring testimony to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are not God of division. 
You are not God of subtraction. Lord Almighty, you are God of multiplication and addition. We we'll pray that you will add values to our life. Yeah. We will not just pilgrim for the sake of it, but something unusual will drop into our spirit. Yeah. Thank you, eternal Father. Every minute and second of this day, for us, Lord, let it be for progress in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lord, we pray that our life and our body, our blood, our system will refuse sickness in the name of Jesus. Yeah. As we enter into this meeting, gradually we pray that which you have prepared us for and you have prepared for us will not elude us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. We hold our Father in the Lord, our Mommy in the Lord today. Pastor Yeh Adeboe, our Mommy Folu Adeboe, let it be well with them in Jesus' name. Progressively, let your glory continue, oh God, to grow in the name of Jesus. In the kingdom to come, the kingdom of heaven, where the streets are made of pure gold, where we are going to wear a crown, where we will be a pillar in the tabernacle of our God, Lord Almighty, none of us will be found wanting. Whatsoever will disqualify us by the efficacy of the blood that was shed on Golgotha, let those things be destroyed today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. Do we share the grace in fellowship? Shall we share the grace in fellowship? And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord.